Do you have any indication that the president is willing to discuss both lifting the debt ceiling and the issue of future spending? Well, believe it or not, Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is about to drop a truth bomb about President Joe Biden. But he lies like a typical politician later, stay tuned for that. If he's changed his mind from his whole time in the Senate and Vice President before, I mean, he literally led the talks in 2011 and he praised having those talks. This is what he's always done in the past. And if he listens to the American public, more than 74% believe we need to sit down and find ways to eliminate this wasteful spending in Washington. So I don't believe he would change his behavior from before. And I know there's a willingness on our side to find a way that we can find a reasonable and responsible way to get this done. Now, Kevin McCarthy is not lying about Joe Biden there. And I'm gonna provide the receipts and the proof. But before I do, just a little bit of context. Republicans are eyeing cuts to Medicare and Social Security in return for agreeing to lift the debt ceiling. They claim that that is not the case, they are lying about that. However, when it comes to what he said about Joe Biden, he's absolutely correct. Back in 2012, there was something referred to as the grand bargain. This is of course during the Obama administration when the House was controlled by Republicans and they claimed that they were unwilling to lift the debt ceiling unless the Democrats agreed to cut spending cuts, namely in Social Security and Medicare. Well, Obama and Biden were willing to do it and Obama engaged in some secretive conversations with then Republican House Speaker John Boehner. In fact, here are the receipts, let's watch. A president and a speaker. One on one, trying to reinvent the size and cost of government. Raising the debt ceiling was part of it, but they hoped for more long lasting tax reform and entitlement cuts, what became known as the grand bargain. And to get the grand bargain, Boehner was willing to offer a politically dangerous concession. He'd agreed to an increase in tax revenue. Well, it was very dangerous, uh, but. It was became clear to me that the president wasn't going to deal uh, with the spending problem uh, without having a conversation about revenues. At the same time Boehner and Obama were meeting in secret, Vice President Biden had been sent to Capitol Hill to hold very public talks with Eric Cantor. Vice President Biden is trying to find areas of commonality, but that's not going to get House you. Republicans are sitting down with Joe Biden again tomorrow. So far, they had met nearly a dozen times. Vice President Joe Biden is expected to hold a Biden, Biden keeps coming back and saying, you're going to have to do something to raise more money. And uh, Cantor keeps saying, we're not raising taxes. We're just not doing the tax thing. Uh, and so that's basically where they hit a wall. But Biden had a bombshell for Cantor. He revealed the secret talks between the president and Boehner. <gasps> now, the reason why Biden did that was because he was like, listen, bro, House Speaker Boehner and homeboy Obama have already agreed to this. Okay, so let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Tax increases in return for cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Luckily, because Republicans wouldn't agree to those tax increases, the grand bargain fell apart. And I say luckily because the Obama administration, including Joe Biden, were willing to cut Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, and so I, I literally bet one of my friends that they were gonna offer it up publicly. And he's like, you're crazy, that'll never happen. And of course it happened. Uh, and by the way, after offering up, uh, cuts to Social Security and Medicare from a Democratic president and vice president. You know what they got back? Well, we just told you, nothing. It was always a trick. And so that guys like Kevin McCarthy could turn around all the way up to now and go, it was Biden who wanted to cut it. <laughs> and by the way, and that's a fair point. There's, yeah. That's a fair point. Now, he, they, got, they theoretically got pushed into it by the Republicans, but they said they were no, willing they to do it. But by the way, I agree with you, Anna. I don't think they were pushed at all. I think corporate Democrats on economic issues are identical to Republicans. Yeah, let me Social issues are very different, but on economic issues, they both want to cut Social Security and Medicare. So this is the game that they've been playing on us the entire time. But to pretend that the Republicans aren't guilty of it is absurd. They're both guilty of it. They are both guilty of it, and we'll provide the receipts for that in just a moment. But before we do, let me just say, it, it's not just that corporate Democrats also want to privatize or have cuts in what they refer to as entitlements. By the way, we are entitled to Social Security and Medicare. We pay into it, we are entitled to it, period. Look, 
on what the Republicans want today in terms of cuts. Do they want to cut Social Security and Medicare? Yes, Rick Scott proposed it. Secondly, they want general cuts that they don't define. That's the number one Republican trick of all time. Third of all, give them credit for something else. They said they are willing to consider defense cuts, which I saw a mainstream media outlet criticizing them like, and they're daring to put defense cuts on the table. First of all, no, they haven't mentioned any specific cuts. No. But if they're willing to cut defense, deal. I'm ready to do it right now, right? They're not. Of course, it's not. Elise Stefanik went on, I, I think it was Fox News, and she's like, yeah, you know, the military has gotten too woke. I mean, and anytime they talk sure. about like, oh, we need to hold corporations accountable or we need to really take a look at military spending. They always reference woke policies for their motivation in doing so. And really, there's there's nothing woke about the military, guys. Nothing. Zero percent of the military is woke. Come on. Okay, putting that aside real quick, the point I wanted to make that I forgot earlier is Democrats don't need to negotiate with Republicans on raising the debt ceiling. You want to know why? They're going to raise the debt ceiling. You want to know why? Because if they don't, the global economy collapses. Their stock portfolios collapse. And the one thing members of Congress on both sides of the aisle care about more than anything else is their precious, precious stock portfolios. So why don't the Democrats, including Joe Biden, call their bluff and be like, no, we're not even gonna negotiate. Like House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is gonna visit Biden to engage in negotiations Wednesday of this week. No, why? Why? No, we're not having a conversation about this. You guys are going to raise the debt ceiling like good little boys and girls because you don't want to see your personal wealth take a nosedive as a result of being ridiculous hacks. So, uh, look, we have receipts on that too. Uh, the filibuster cannot be touched, except in the first two years of Biden, they did touch it once. They made an exception for it. Did you ever hear about it? Mainstream media never covers it. Cable news, whenever they discuss anything, they say, never mentions it. What was it for? Raising the debt ceiling. So they're gonna raise it. They're gonna raise okay. it. Okay, the Democrats are gonna raise it, the Republicans are gonna raise it because their donors would be the most affected. There's no way they're gonna do it. So Biden, why don't you be a man for a change? Because okay? he probably wants the cuts to Social because, Security. Exactly, Let's keep exactly. It real, right? Okay, if he was like a halfway decent politician, which, okay, and he actually meant anything he said, this is the easiest fix of all time. Kevin, here, I called you into my office just to say, go for it. Have at it, Hoss. I want you to do it. I want you to go and tell the country that you're not gonna raise the debt ceiling, we're not gonna pay our debts, mm -hmm. and have the dollar crash and have the stock market crash. I dare you to do it, Kevin. I'm right in your goddamn face, Kevin. What are you, weak? Go ahead, do it, I dare you. Come on, dark Brandon. Yeah, let yeah. me see. Of course, Biden's not gonna do that. He's gonna offer up cuts he wanted to cut anyway. The main, mainstream media will lie to you and say, "Oh, it, it, his arm was twisted, he had to do it. Mm -hmm. They all had to do it. Uh, well, did they have to, how about raising taxes on the rich? Did they have to do that for the purpose of the deficit? Oh No, they didn't have to do that. Right. Uh, interesting how this game is played. So if you're wondering at this point, with the huge, a question I get all the time, which side are you guys on? Neither, we're not on a side, we're on the side of the news to give you things that are actually true. And there's something deeply wrong with the rest of the media when they pick a side and go, Biden's right about everything, McCarthy's right about everything. When you hear that, know that the news anchor is lying to you. 100%. Now uh, let's get to Kevin McCarthy's very clear lies during this interview on Face the Nation. Are you willing to consider any reductions to Social Security and Medicare? No, let's take those off the table. We Completely. Wanna, yeah, I mean, if you read our commitment to America, all we talk about is strengthening Medicare and Social Security. So, and I know the president says he doesn't even wanna look at it, but we've gotta make sure we strengthen those. What I do you think, mean by strengthen? Do you mean lift the retirement age? For no, example? no, no, what I'm talking about, Social Security and Medicare, you can keep that to the side. What I wanna look at is they've increased spending by 30%, $400 billion in four years. When you look at what they have done, adding $10 trillion of debt for the next 10 years in this short time period. Okay, so two major lies were told in that clip. Lie number one, and we're gonna debunk all of it, was that Republicans wanna protect, they wanna protect Medicare and Social Security. Except that's not true at all, at all. In fact, Rick Scott put out a plan that would cut Social Security and Medicare. And it was so unpopular with the electorate 
that Democrats for once did something really smart and they campaigned on that leading up to the midterms. And that could have been one of the factors in why Republicans perform so poorly in the midterm elections. The other thing I wanted to mention, only weeks after taking control of the chamber, GOP lawmakers under new speaker Kevin McCarthy have rallied around firm pledges for austerity, meaning cuts to social spending programs. So far, the party has focused its attention on slimming down federal health care, education, science and labor programs, perhaps by billions of dollars. But a group of GOP lawmakers has called for the creation of special panels that might recommend changes to Social Security and Medicare. Others proposed raising the Social Security retirement age to 70. 70. It's currently 67, which is still too high, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so. All right, uh, there's a third obvious lie, but it's we're so used to it, sometimes you don't pick it up. But as soon as I say it, you're gonna go, oh yeah. He said, this is what they did over the last four years. No, that was the second lie. I, I didn't even get a chance to debunk yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Biden's only been president for two years. Yep. Okay, who is the they you're talking about? Well, so are you criticizing Donald Trump? Is that what you're saying? Are you seeing that Donald Trump totally royally screwed this up and added 30% extra spending? Is that what you're saying, Kevin? No. Go ahead and bar a lago and, and tell it to his face, Kevin. No, <laughs> daddy can do no wrong. Daddy yeah. can do no wrong. But here's what the reality is, okay? First, uh, just a, let's go to a graphic five here. So the national debt has risen by almost 7.8 trillion during Trump's time in office. This was an wow. analysis that was done in December of 2020. It amounts to about $23,500 in new federal debt for every person in the country. The growth in the annual deficit under Trump ranks as the third biggest increase relative to the size of the economy of any US presidential administration. Remember, he passed tax cuts that cost the country $2 trillion in one decade. It's a lot of money, but let me continue. President uh, uh, President Ronald Reagan, because you know who, who are the other presidents who added to the national deficit? President Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, vowing to limit the size of government. Still, during his eight years in the White House, the nation's deficit roughly doubled and topped 200 billion several times. Reagan's successor, George H.W. Bush, also presided over a record breaking deficit of $290 billion in 1992. And guess what? His son didn't fare much better, and that's George W. Bush. Uh, he, when he took office in uh, 2001, Bush cited the Clinton surplus as evidence that taxes were too high. So the first thing he did was cut taxes. He pushed through significant tax cuts and oversaw an increase in spending. And the combination again drove the US budget into the red. The deficit reached a record $458 billion in 2008, Bush's last year in office, and would triple the following year as the Bush and Obama administrations faced the global financial crisis. Okay, uh, you hear a thousand times over, including by McCarthy there, that the Republicans want to balance the budget. They want uh, no debt, no deficit. Um, now, a uh, fun uh, trivia question for you. Last Republican president to balance the budget uh, when uh, they left office, Dwight Eisenhower. <laughs> okay, they never do it. Since Eisenhower, they've never done it. They don't care to do it. In fact, they add much more to the debt every single time they're in office than the Democrats do. Democrats come in and cut it. This is a memo from the Nixon administration where they, and a lot of these evil plans came from the Nixon administration. That's why you see Tucker Carlson defending Nixon out of nowhere recently on it. They said, what we should do when we're in office is do tax cuts and extra spending because people love it. And then as soon as a Democrat gets into office, we should complain and say, oh, debt, deficit, and make sure that they don't do any of that because it'll hurt the economy if they actually try to cut the deficit. And then we'll blame them for the bad economy. So that's why when Trump was in office, not just from Republicans, but from Democrats and from the media, you never heard anything about the debt or the deficit never. as they were piling on $7.8 trillion. The minute Biden gets in office, oh, the debt, the oh, deficit. Oh, this is a decades old plan and mainstream media loves it and they go along with it. And every time they're like, "Oh, I was just born yesterday. Oh, do they do that every time? I'm a, I'm a reporter, I can't figure that out. All of a sudden, I'm also concerned about the debt. I'm writing about it 24 seven when I never wrote about it for four years under Trump. 
No, the media is part of this scam. 100%. And again, let me reiterate, there is no reason for Democrats or the Biden administration to engage in negotiations over raising the debt ceiling because they're gonna raise the debt ceiling. This is a phony fight meant to convince the American people that we need to cut programs that are incredibly popular and necessary. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.